hi guys welcome to today's video in today's video we are going to be learning how to make a responsive ui design in figma here we have the desktop the tablet and the mobile breakpoint and if i select this desktop breakpoint and i try to increase and reduce the width you can see that the content in it is also responsive as we increase or reduce the width here we have the mobile breakpoint and for the navigation bar we've created a separate navigation bar for the mobile viewport I'm going to leave the link to this particular design in the description so that if you want to follow along, you can duplicate this and follow along with the design process. I also have the video to how we created this dashboard design on my channel. I'm going to put a link to the video down in the description panel also. So if you want to learn to create a dashboard UI, you should definitely check out that particular video. So without further ado, let's get started to learning how we can make our desktop web UI design responsive in Figma. And do not forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so that you get notified whenever I post a new video. So to get started with our responsive web design, the first thing you're going to notice is that if I open up this desktop frame here, you're going to see that I have all my layers and all my elements just um, laying here on this particular frame. So what I'm going to do first is to make sure I group related items together. So as you can see here in the top navigation bar, you can see that all of these nav items are just individual text elements. So I'm going to select all of this, the first three here, and I'm going to hit Shift A to create an auto layout. I'm also going to select both of these, hit Shift A to create like an auto layout frame on them. And if you're not familiar with auto layout, I have a video on auto layout explaining how to use it um, as a beginner. I'm going to select this desktop frame here and I'm going to try and increase it. You can see that we don't have any responsive element currently. So I'm just going to undo this. Another thing we need to understand is the fact that there are several ways to create a responsive feel and look for your web design in Figma, right? So one particular way is to select each elements or group of elements let's say we have our logo here and i'm going to click on this constraint button before in the previous ui we can just find the constraint property just laid here on the right panel but now it's where we have this button so what we can do here is you can see that the first one is on the left and which is this line that you can see here on the left and the second is at the top which is this at the top which is typically where we want this particular element to be then for this what we want to do is to open up the constraint button and for this we don't want it to be left we actually want it to be center and we want it to be at the top so we want to be so we so we want this to be aligned top and center just like the way it is positioned relative to the page and then for this at the far right here we want to do something similar we want to open up the constraints and here we don't want it to be left we want it to be right so that it is like tied to the right side of this frame and then top just like this so this is attached to the top right here is center top and here is left top so if i click on this desktop frame now and i try to increase this you can now see that we are having a responsive look and feel on our top navigation bar so this is one way to achieve this so that's one way to achieve this another way to do this is to use auto layouts right which is majorly what we are going to be using for this particular tutorial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore all the constraints we've added to this. And the way I like to create my top navigation bar is to select this item, which is the logo, and select the navigation link item and probably the call to action buttons on the nav bar and hit shift A to create an auto layout. Now the next thing I want to do is to have a consistent padding and margin on the right and on the left. So it's going to take effect on the nav bar and also on the hero section and any other section we have on our landing page. We're going to make sure we have a consistent padding on the left and on the right. So from here, I'm going to come to the padding section, left and right. I'm going to give it a spacing of 48 pixel on the left and on the right. And I'm going to add a spacing of 12 pixel on the top and on the bottom. So after adding our padding around this navigation bar, I'm just going to move it and try to position it um, to fit the desktop properly and wherever it gets to at the end here I'm just going to click and drag it up till the end 
Now, while still having our navigation bar selected, I'm going to come down to this spacing section. As you can see, we have a fixed spacing value, but I want to change this to use the auto. So what auto does is that it spreads the item evenly on our element. So we have an even spacing here and here. So typically, once we have this, we can then select this navigation bar and add a constraint to this desktop. So I'm going to select the navigation bar. I'm going to come to the constraints and I'm going to add it here. I'm going to make it center and I'm going to make it top. So it is tied to the center top of our frame. Clicking on this desktop, if I click and I drag this, you can see that this is responsive, but it's just sitting here in the middle. One way we can make this better is to make this top navigation bar fill the entire desktop as soon as we drag it in or out. So one way to achieve our top navigation bar being completely responsive when we move this to the right and to the left is to make this particular desktop frame an auto layout frame. So our main frame that contains all our elements is going to be an auto layout frame. So before we go ahead, first I'm going to click on this frame 3 which is this top navigation bar and I'm going to rename this to nav bar. The next is that I want to contain all of this content in a single auto layout frame. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit I'm going to select the main title here. I'm going to select the subtext and also the button and hit shift A to create an auto layout on them. Now I have this section, which I'm going to rename to content. So from here, I'm going to select both of these elements by clicking the first one, holding down shift and clicking the second, then hit shift A on both of them to create an auto layout. Now, once I have this auto layout frame for the items in the middle, I'm going to make it span the entire width by clicking and dragging to the edge just like this. Clicking and dragging to the edge, I'm also going to try to move it to the top to limit the top navigation bar. So from here, I can then click on our desktop and then make this also use auto layout. So I'm going to click on this and basically what it's just going to do is going to turn our desktop to an auto layout frame by stacking both our navigation and this frame here, which I'm going to rename also to hero section. So now we have our desktop frame in a vertical auto layout containing our navbar and hero section. And in order to make this responsive, what we can now do is to select this navbar, come to this section and make it fill container. This property is only available when you're using an auto layout like this. And to verify that, I'm going to click on the desktop here and I'm going to select this auto layout, use auto layout button again to remove it. And if I click on this nav bar, you're going to see that we don't have the fill option. So I'm going to go back, click on our desktop and click on this auto layout button to make it an auto layout frame. Now clicking on our nav bar, coming here and setting it to fill container. And with this, if we click on our desktop frame and we try to drag it open, you're going to see that this top navigation bar is now responsive. Now we need to focus on our hero section to make it also responsive. So the next thing for us is also to start making our hero section responsive. And the most obvious thing to do at first is to click on this and make this fill container also. So once we do that, I'm going to select the desktop and I'm going to drag in and out. And you can see that the content in it begins to stretch. And if we make this a lot smaller to mobile view, you're going to see that some of the content are actually not really responsive. So I'm going to undo this and leave this back at 1440. And we can now start making edits to our hero section to make it responsive. The first thing I want to do is to add the proper padding. As you notice, we are using padding of 48 on the left and right for the nav bar. And we're going to keep that consistent by giving this 48 um, at the left and on the right. Here at the top, I also want a specific padding. So I'm going to open up this padding section and give it a top padding of 60 pixel just to drop the contents down a little bit. Now this is looking a little nice. Now, the next thing we want to focus on is this content section. One thing we can do is to select this and go to fill container, right? You can now see that this fills the entire container. And if we select the desktop frame and try to scale this in and out, you can see that the contents are actually being scaled in and out. But the only challenge to this is the fact that we don't want this particular um, header text to span the entire width, like from beginning to the end. We want it to have a maximum width where it is contained in. So I'm going to select this container and open up this width section and click on add max width. And the maximum width I want to use is like 700 pixels. So we are going to leave it like this. 
Now, once this desktop scales to more than 700 pixel, this particular content remains like this, but once it is lower and it's getting to the mobile responsive view, we can see that this is also scaling. And if your text is not scaling along with this, you want to also make sure you select the text, come to this side and make it fill container. And also this title text, you can make it fill container. Make sure you make the content in your frame fill container. And then you also make this particular one fill while adding the max width. So typically that's what you're going to do to this particular text section. And once you scale in and out, it's going to also scale in and out. For this particular mobile view, I think you might want to create a different font sizes for your mobile view because this particular font size seems too big on mobile view. So you want to create a different font sizes. And we are going to look into that a bit as you can see that even when we shrink this, our top navigation bar isn't giving the appropriate look for mobile. And we are also going to work on that. So I'm going to revert this back to the regular desktop view. And the next thing we want to look at is our image. As you can see that the image is also shrinking um, as soon as we reduce this viewport. So I'm going to revert this back to 1440. And for the image, I'm going to select the image. I'm going to come to this view section and make it fill from every other property that you find it. So with that, you can see that once we shrink this, our image remains the same and every other thing is responsive. But one thing you should note from here, I'm going to revert this back to 1440. And one thing you should note from here is the fact that we need to create a different view for our mobile and tablet view. So I'm going to click on this desktop and I'm going to create a duplicate. And for this duplicate, I'm going to reduce the width to 760 or 780 for, let's say, a tablet view. And we don't want to have all our links all spread out here on a tablet view. Let's even say this works for a tablet view. We are going to create another viewport. And for this viewport, it's going to be the mobile viewport. And we can use 393 for our mobile viewport. Now you can see that this is definitely not what we want. So as you can see, the top navigation bar isn't looking nice. So what you want to do is to duplicate this and make some changes to it. First, we want to remove um, this particular content. And for this, we are also going to remove this. And we are just going to leave this particular header logo. Next, we are going to look for a hamburger menu. And I'm just going to select this hamburger menu and import icon. I'm going to close this up because I'm using the Iconify plugin. You can also get that if you want. So I'm going to cut this icon here and I'm going to paste it in this navbar that we just created at the top. So I'm going to select this navbar by hitting Ctrl C or Ctrl X to cut it. And I'm going to paste to replace here. So here you have this view for your mobile view. You can also go ahead to reduce your font size for your mobile view. Here we can make it 48. You can also reduce the line height to make it better. Another thing you could do is to select this particular hero section on your mobile view and reduce the spacing on the right and on the left to like 16 pixel or 24 or 18. It could be based on your preference so that you have enough room for your content. Here you can also reduce this text. I think 48 is actually quite large for mobile view to something like 32. Then you reduce the line height also. So these are several things you could do to achieve your mobile view, your tablet view, and your desktop view. Another thing you might want to consider is the fact that here where you have your image, you can also go to the view section and change it to fit. If you want to have the image fit this particular position, just like this. You can also make the same change to your tablet view by coming here changing this to fit and also just making it um, like this so i do feel like this is a better view personally another thing you might want to do is to select this section and also reduce the line spacing you can also reduce the letter spacing for title text um, you can do the same thing for this so those are basically adjustments you can make on your mobile tablets um, and desktop view just to give it a unique experience for different breakpoints. So guys, we've come to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Do not forget to like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell as I'm going to be seeing you guys in my next video. Bye for now.